All right, today's lesson is 1.3 compound interest, looking at future value, and uh, is on pages 20 to 33 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same as before to demonstrate understanding of financial decision making, including analysis of renting, leasing, and buying credit compound interest investment portfolios. And our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to develop and understand a formula for calculating compound interest. And number two, to be able to use a compound interest formula to answer various types of problems. Developing a compound interest formula. So to develop our compound interest formula, we're going to use the same process as we did when we developed our simple interest formula. First, we will do it with numbers, and then we will use that concept and replace the numbers with variables. In order to do this, we first need to be reminded that when you invest money in an account that receives compound interest, each time the bank calculates the interest, you get interest on the total amount in the account, not just the principal. So it's not like simple interest where you only get interest on the amount you initially put in, you get interest on the total amount in the account. All right, so it says, how much money will you make if you invest $1,000 in an account with a compound interest rate of 3% calculated annually over the course of five years? So we're gonna do our actual calculation and then we're gonna do the one with variables. So right off the bat, at the end of the first year, you're getting 3%. So remember that we have the one in front because you're making 100% of the money that you already have in the bank and then you get another 3%. That's where the 0 0.03 comes from. That gives you a total of $1,030. And that's after the first year. So then you take that $1,030, and with compound interest, you make interest on the interest. So when we take 1.03 and multiply it by 1030, we get 1060.90. That's after your second year. And we take the 1060.90, multiply it by 1.03 and we get 1092.73 and then we take the 1092.73 multiply it by 1.03 and we get 1125.51 you take that multiply it by 1.03 and you get 1159.27 so that's the concept and of uh, compound interest. You keep on making money on the total amount of money that's in the account. So let's take a look at creating a formula. So what we've done here on the left hand side is we took $1,000, which is how much we started with. And what we did is we multiplied it by 1.03, but we did that one, two, three, four, five times. So you could write it like this, but that is the long way of writing it. So to make it uh, less cumbersome in order to calculate, we would then just take that 1,000, we're gonna multiply it by 1.03, but we would raise that to the fifth power. So with variables, the amount in your account, which we call A, is gonna be determined by the principal. And here we have one plus our interest rate. Now we're gonna use the letter I for our interest rate. And then we have this exponent here, and this exponent was how long it was in the bank, and we're gonna call that N. So again, pretty much um, the same process as we use to find simple interest, but a few extra variables here. I is our interest rate, and N is our number of um, compounding terms. So once again, when we're using these formulas, we need to be aware of how many times the interest is calculated, or how what we say compounded, because this will affect both our interest rate, which we called I, and our term, which we called N. So here's a quick little table. If it's being compounded monthly, so every month, your interest rate, remember the interest rate they give you is an annual interest rate, so you would just take that divided by 12. If it's being compounded quarterly, you would divide it by four. If it's being compounded semi-annually, you would divide it by two. Your term, however, gets multiplied by 12. Because if it was, say, four years, and it's every month, then you're getting your interest calculated 48 times. Likewise, if it's quarterly, you're getting it uh, multiplied by four, and if it's semi-annually, you would be getting your term multiplied by two. So here's our example. It says, how much money would Amanda have in the bank if she placed $3,500 in an account with an annual interest rate of 3.8% compounded monthly for six years? So we'll use our new formula. So A equals uh, P, which is your principal, multiplied by one plus I, all raised to the power of N. Now, things you need to remember, our principal is $3,500. Our interest rate here it's a 3.8 annual interest rate, but it's being compounded monthly, so that's 3.8 divided by 12. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could do this on the side and figure out what that is, but it's just a crazy decimal, 0 0.0031667, blah, 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 blah. But our N, we know is six months for, uh, monthly for six years, sorry, and that would be 72, that's six times 12. So when you put this in your calculator, you'll find out that Amanda ends up having $4,394.73 in her bank account. Here's our second and last example. It says James invested $15,000 in an account for 12 years, compounded semi-annually, and at the end of the 12 years had accumulated $21,000. What was his annual interest rate? So using our new formula, A equals P, 1 plus I, to the power of N, we know that A is 21,000. We know that P is 15,000. We do not know the interest rate, so we'll leave it as I. And we know that the value for N will be semi-annually, so that means we're gonna take our number, multiply it by two, and it's 12 years, so that would be a 24 there. So to isolate, we, we're isolating I, because that's what we're looking for. We're gonna divide both sides by 15,000. And what we get here is 1.40 equals 1 plus i to the power of 24. Now, the problem is, this is raised to the power of 24. We can't get i out of these brackets. So we're going to do something called taking the 24th root. So on your calculator, you may have an nth root button. And what that is, is just means you could take the cube root. You could have a 3 here. You could have a 4 or 5. We're going to take the 24th root. So 24th root of both sides on the right hand side these 24s just end up cancelling each other out the 24th root and the raised to the 24th power so we get one plus i on the right hand side on the left hand side though we get the 24th root of 1.40 and when you do that you find that to be 1.014 so 1.014 multiplied by itself 24 times would give you 1.40 so now to solve for i, we would just subtract 1 from both sides. So we get 0 0.014 being i. Now, that's the interest rate. That's something that has already been divided by 2. So if we want to find the annual interest rate, we would take the 0 0.014 and we'd multiply it by 2. And we get 0 0.028, which means that James invested his money at 2.8%. So in summary, when money is invested in an account with compound interest, each time the interest is calculated, it uses the total amount in the account, not just the initial amount that was invested. So that's where compound is, interest is different than simple interest. So our formula for compound interest is A equals P, 1 plus I to the N. And remember that you need to adjust your values for I and N based on how many times the interest is being calculated in that year. So your assignment is on pages 30 to 32. You could do any questions from 2 to 7, 9 to 12, and 14 to 15, and 15 sorry. Um, good luck, and we'll see you in class.